fat fish. Seventeen, fourteen. Can see that. 683 about a 27 inch 27 inch right here and not quite ready to be weighed yet okay here's the big boy yeah this is a 27 inch fish this is a nice fish and it doesn't want to be weighed yet <laughs> come on baby three six oh. nine six and put him back for a minute. We're putting the light on this fish. I hope you can see this. And we're holding it while it revives. They're very careful with the big ones like this. And try already, to zoom if they can in keep on its still. upright. He's getting, he's getting there. Yeah. I'm trying to show you his gills moving. I can see him here. I'm not sure if the camera can see that or not. I'm trying to zoom in a little bit. We'll go ahead and work up some more. Paul will keep an eye on this. Yeah. One of the things that they do to try to, you know, keep the fish as healthy as possible is that when Paul turns around to put the fish in the live well, he does it as quickly as possible and doesn't keep multiple fish in the net. And the other thing that he does is he lets up off the pedal that he stands on. And what that does is make sure they're not shocking fish that they're actually going to, you know, not be able to weigh and measure. So that's just one of the, you know, ways that they try to minimize the stress and the impact on the fish. What did we measure him at, hon? What was that? Uh, 822. Which is in inches? 32 and a half. 32 and a half inches. His pipe jaw alone is like 11 inches. It's the most amazing thing. And we're going to take all the time we need to make sure this fish is not harmed because this is the thing that people worry about. And so we're going to show you that there's nothing to worry about. Oh yeah, we can see him real good mm -hmm. in the camera when you got that light on him. I thought that was excellent. And I have never seen a kite jaw yeah, on a fish a like this. It is absolute monster. Oh yeah. When he rolled at first, it looked like a big catfish. It didn't it even did. look like a trout. I bet it did. And he's got, like any fish this big, you'd expect to see a few battle scars here and there. And But man, he's just, now he's starting to fight a little bit, which means in a minute or two, he's going to be wanting to go because he's, now obviously you can see by him kind of thrashing. Oh man. It's a monster. A big old head. My God, this is like, I've never seen a pipe jaw like this. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Jeff's hanging on to him pretty good by the tail because he wants to make sure that when he does go, he's ready. Oh man, look at 
get in. Yeah, keep the light on and stuff. I've got him on the camera. This is great. And he wants to go over into the moss and hide from us, but we don't think that's a good idea. Jeff's going to kind of say, why don't you go over this way, buddy? Now he's fighting. He's frog now. He's fighting you good, isn't he? There he is. Is he going to the There he is. Yeah, he's thinking about it. Oh, he's going to turn around if I can just fight you. Actually, I think he's going to turn fight you. now for sample three. Normally it's like half a cap. I did a full cap for us. Okay. Yeah, that's a nice that's fish. The hypothesis. Well, anyway, now they're giving them the clove oil to calm them down a little more. Might have been some left from the last tank full of water, but they try to give them the the minimum required so they don't thrash around and hurt themselves, but they don't want to overdope them either. Nice cut through it. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. I think it had two of them. Five, 24. Okay. Oh, that's a nice brown. That's some fat. Yeah. And there he goes. Bye bye, baby. Brown 505. There's another gorgeous brown. 1470.
docking the boat. It's the end of our electro fishing trip for the evening. Jeff, closing statements. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess uh, we're done for the night. I'm glad it went well. Uh, I think the fish handled really well. Uh, and that's pretty much the way we do things. And, and uh, you know, we really didn't do anything different tonight than what we typically do. Uh, and so, you know, we, we try to reduce the, any mortality or injury to the fish as much as possible. Uh, most of us that get into this kind of business are fishermen anyway to begin with kind of fishermen first and we hate to see any fish uh, you know die as a result of what we do however you know sampling is an extremely important part of our job and uh, gives us the kind of information that we need to try to make good uh, science-based management decisions so we hopefully can make the, the fishery better for everybody I guess that's <laughs> everything you. I have to say. Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. And uh, just for the record, um, no fish died tonight. And we saw some really great fish. And thank you very much. Bye. Thank Thanks, Julie. Well, what video of the White River would be complete without a picture of one of our monster brown trout? I just had to get that in somewhere. Paul looks so happy, doesn't he? Anyway, I just wanted to thank AGFC again for inviting me to come out with them this evening. It was a blast. You know, I made this video for several different reasons. I wanted to see just exactly how this process was performed, and I thought it would be something that a lot of you would be interested in. And, maybe most importantly, I wanted to see just how hard this process was on the fish. As always on the river, stories from the past and rumors of today abound. Many intelligent, conservation-minded people worry that electroshocking is far too stressful a method to be utilized for fisheries management. I just wanted to see for myself. My take? When performed properly by competent persons, this process does not seem to be much harder on the trout than catching, measuring, and releasing them while you're out fishing. We did not have a single fish die the entire evening. I've put more of a hurt on fish myself just fighting them to the boat. I've had to spend 20 to 30 minutes reviving larger trout before they were even able to swim off. But I guess at the end of the day it comes down to this. Is it possible to injure trout while electroshocking? Of course it is. Has injury to trout ever occurred in the past? Probably so. But from what I can tell, the incidence of injury today is extremely low. We handled a lot of large trout tonight, folks, and as soon as that clove oil anesthetic wore off, all these bad boys were good to go. If it was not for AGFC, the river wouldn't have trout in it to begin with. The last thing they want to do is go out and hurt the trout that they are trying to manage and protect. On the other hand, it's not reasonable to expect an absolute 100% margin of safety for any kind of sampling process. I got a brand new appreciation of just how difficult it is to count moving fish in moving water. It is definitely not an easy thing. And if there were a safer way to handle it, I'm extremely confident that Game and Fish would switch to it. Finally, I guess I just wanted to go for the most important reason of all, that I'd just like to be out on the river, 